But then you call them to your house. Not much scares us, but this got us shook. You are using kind of not such nice words. She came in and started saying all of that, like using our lyrics against her. How many young ladies you see walking around on four legs in a jail? That day at Dion Warwick's house, I believe we, we got our gangster that day. In the 90s, gangster rap reigned the music world, and consequently it was also the age of misogynistic lyrics. But soon came the antidote that subdued the mightiest singers in a single meeting. You made me part of the problem. Now I want you to make me part of the solution. Dionne Warwick, a six-time Grammy Award-winning singer, is one of the most recognizable pop voices of all time with over 100 million record sales worldwide. The word on the street is that Dion is just as big of a thug as she was a star. That day at Dion Warwick's house, I believe we, we got our gangster that day. Let's delve into the nitty gritty deets of the life of a music icon so fearsome that even the legendary gangster, Suge Knight, shook in his boots. In a jaw dropping twist that sent shockwaves through the music world, the dominant forces of 90s gangster rap found itself face to face with an unexpected challenger, none other than Grammy winning icon Dionne Warwick, unofficially known as the Queen of Twitter. Known for her direct and fearless tweets, Warwick had already made a name for herself by playfully teasing brands like Oreo and engaging in conversations with Hollywood heartthrob Jake Gyllenhaal. But when she heard the misogynistic lyrics that permeated the 90s airwaves, Warwick decided she had heard enough. Uh, Damon, we yeah. were meeting, um, was in the car with me and this rap thing came on. Ugh. With an unyielding spirit, Warwick set out on a mission to confront the very rappers responsible for the controversial content. In a move that stunned the industry, she sought them out personally to confront them head on about the damaging impact of their words. Warwick, armed with her decades of musical expertise and an unapologetic demand for change, faced off against the hardened figures of gangster rap. Yeah, I called them to the house based on the fact that they were all using kind of not such nice words. Contrary to what many might think, it was the rappers that were shook by the sudden invitation, not the other way around. In an interview with CNN, Snoop Dogg explained that they were told to be at her residence at 7 a.m., not a minute late. While explaining his experience, Snoop revealed that all three of the attendants were scared of Dion. We show up at our door about like 6.52, because we want to be on time. Not much scares us, but this got us shook. Snoop later explained that they had a high regard for Dion because of her success and talent. Quote, we're powerful right now, but she's been powerful forever. 30 some years in the game, in the big home with a lot of money and success. It is really important to consider that Dion had three of the biggest gangsters at her door before time, with a single invitation. It is said that she had so much power in the industry that even Suge Knight was no match for her. Now that is the power of Miss Dion right there. No, that's the power of respect. That's real? That's what that is. Now you might be wondering what kind of a pep talk Warwick gave them to be so respectful towards her. Well, in an interview with CNN, she spilled the beans. She said, quote, you guys are all going to have to grow up. You're going to have families. You're going to have children. You're going to have little girls. And one day that little girl is going to look at you and say, daddy, did you really say that? Is that really you? What are you going to say? The rappers reportedly found themselves dumbfounded as their own lyrics were thrown back at them by none other than Dionne Warwick, a true titan of female vocalists. The weight and impact of their words, once used to degrade and objectify women, haunted them with a bitter irony. Snoop recalled the most pivotal moment in his life and said, quote, She was checking me at a time when I thought we couldn't be checked. We were the most gangsta as you could be, but that day at Dionne Warwick's house, I believe we got out gangster that day. I made it a point to put records of joy, me uplifting everybody and nobody dying and everybody living. You might be wondering why Warwick intervened in things that frankly had nothing to do with her. Well, this was her reply when an interviewer asked her the same thing. These little girls don't have tails and they don't walk on four legs. So why are you calling them what you're calling them? And they promised that they were going to start curtailing the way that they were presenting themselves on recordings. However, while Snoop Dogg and Tupac felt the interaction drove some lessons home, Warwick admitted that she felt as if she was scolding them. Quote, they felt that I was, as they said, dissing them. I wanted them to know that they were dealing with someone that, first of all, if I didn't care about you, you would not have been invited to my home. 
They all kind of knew that I was quite serious. We had something to talk about. I was giving them a spanking and they wanted to know why I was spanking them. Snoop revealed that he hopes that he made up for his past mistakes in the eyes of Dion. He said, quote, Dion, I hope I became the jewel that you saw when I was the little dirty rock that was in your house. I hope I'm making you proud. Fans all over the world regard Dion as a true treasure of the music industry. Quote, I love you and salute you, madam, Miss DW. I used to work at Bally's Theater where you used to perform in 2017-18. Love watching you perform, great music and shows as ever. I even see you outside by the parking lot alone by yourself wearing just jeans and a shirt just like the very normal people. Really appreciated you for being such a great woman. Prayers for good health, ma'am. Dion, who was born on December 12, 1940 in East Orange, is an iconic American pop and R&B singer. Her soulful and distinctive sound captivated audiences worldwide, making her one of the most celebrated artists of her time. Warwick's career reached great heights through her collaborations with renowned songwriters and producers, most notably Burt Bacharach and Hal David. Together they created a string of timeless hits that have become synonymous with her name. Songs like Walk On By, I Say A Little Prayer, and Do You Know The Way To San Jose established Warwick as a true musical powerhouse. Throughout her career, Warwick showcased her versatility by seamlessly transitioning between pop, R&B, and adult contemporary genres. Her smooth and emotive vocal delivery, combined with her ability to infuse heartfelt emotion into her performances, resonated deeply with audiences. You might not be aware that the legendary Warwick was raised in a middle-class, racially integrated community in East Orange, New Jersey. Her family was both spiritually and musically inclined. Her mother managed a renowned gospel choir, the Drinkard Singers. And her father became a gospel record promoter, and Dion began singing in church at a young age. She often played piano or organ for the Drinkard Singers, and she sometimes sang in place of absent adult members. As a teen, she formed a group called the Gospel Heirs with her sister, Dee Dee. The group enjoyed relative success singing backup for a number of musicians in local venues and on recordings. You, you, you started singing with your eyes closed? I did too. Let me tell you, at six years old, uh, I was seven. Uh -huh. being called out of the audience by, the, by your grandfather, <laughs> baby girl, come up here. After completing her high school education at East Orange High School, Dion received a music scholarship to the University of Hartford in Connecticut. Her studies there focused on voice performance and piano, allowing her to refine her musical talents. During her time in Hartford, Warwick's career took an unexpected turn when she had the opportunity to work as an accompanying vocalist for recording sessions in New York City. It was in the bustling music scene of the city that she crossed paths with the talented pianist and composer Burt Bacharach. In an interview with The Guardian, she said, Quote, I was doing demonstration records and backing singing in studios in New York while I was in college. For Dina Washington, the entire Skepter roster, Chuck Jackson, Maxine Brown, the Shirelles, we did some things with Benny King. They all did. Are you kidding me? They were stars. It was really wonderful to be, first of all, in demand. And that's what our group was. And subsequently over the years, I made friends with all these people. Recognizing Warwick's exceptional vocal abilities, Bacharach enlisted her to record demos featuring his compositions which were written in collaboration with lyricist Hal David. These demos served as a way to showcase the songs and pitch them to established artists. Warwick's collaboration with Bacharach and David proved to be a pivotal moment in her career. The combination of Bacharach's intricate melodies and David's poignant lyrics, combined with Warwick's soulful voice, created a unique and captivating sound that became her signature. Don't make me over, now that I do. Dion's exceptional singing talent attracted the attention of an executive at Skepter Records, leading to her signing with the label. In 1962, she released her debut single I Smiled Yesterday and Don't Make Me Over. Both songs were written and produced by the renowned duo of Burt and David. Interestingly, during the process of releasing her first single, there was an inadvertent misspelling of Dion's surname, born Warwick, as Warwick on the record. Rather than correcting the mistake, Dion decided to embrace the error and adopted the misspelled name as her professional moniker from that point forward. The release of Don't Make Me Over marked a significant milestone in Warwick's career as the song became a breakout hit and established her as a rising star in the music industry. I never knew your, your, your name wasn't Warwick. No. It's not. Your last it's Warwick. Warwick? Yeah. Her debut single peaked at number 21 on the US Billboard Hot 100 and number 5 on the Billboard Hot R&B Singles Chart. 
The song was so successful that it led to Warwick's first overseas concert tour in France where she was hailed as Paris's Black Pearl. During the mid-1960s, Dion expanded her presence in the entertainment industry by performing in popular nightclubs and theaters. She also made notable appearances on various television shows, including Hullabaloo and The Red Skelton Hour, showcasing her talent to a wider audience. Throughout this period, Warwick continued to release a string of hits and albums, with many of them being collaborations with Burt and David. These collaborations provided to be highly successful, resulting in several top 10 singles that solidified Warwick's status as a prominent artist of the era. Later on, Warwick released Walk On By, a timeless classic that became one of her signature songs. Its emotional depth and mesmerizing melody struck a chord with audiences, cementing Warwick's reputation for delivering soulful performances. In 1967, Warwick achieved another major hit with I Say A Little Prayer, a song that perfectly showcased her vocal range and ability to infuse heartfelt emotion into her music. The song became an instant favorite among listeners and further solidified her status as a chart-topping artist. Another notable single from this period was The Valley of the Dolls that was released the following year. This song reached the impressive position of number two on the Billboard Pop chart, propelling Warwick even further into the spotlight and increasing her visibility and recognition. Me walking down the street and I start to cry. Two years later, Dion received her first Grammy Award for Best Female Contemporary Pop Vocal Performance for her hit song, Do You Know the Way to San Jose, which became by far her biggest hit, selling more than 3,500,000 copies globally. She later won her second Grammy Award for Best Female Contemporary Vocal Performance for I'll Never Fall in Love Again. This poignant song showcased her vocal prowess and emotional depth, solidifying her status as a well-respected and acclaimed artist. Despite the success and numerous accolades, tensions arose between Dion, Burt, and David, leading to a falling out between the talented collaborators. By this time, she had already recorded 30 hit singles and at least 20 best-selling albums. What do you get when you fall in love? A guy with a pin? During the majority of the 70s, Dion experienced relatively fewer hits compared to her earlier career. However, there was a notable exception when she collaborated with the Spinners on the song Then Came You, which topped the charts and reignited her popularity. Warwick's career received another boost with the release of two successful songs, Deja Vu and I'll Never Love This Way Again. These songs not only resonated with audiences, but also earned Warwick two Grammy Awards. Deja Vu won her the Grammy for Best Female R&B Vocal Performance, while I'll Never Love This Way Again brought her the Grammy for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance. This resurgence in popularity continued throughout the 80s. During this period, Warwick achieved another significant milestone by reconciling with Burt, her former collaborator. They joined forces once again for the song That's What Friends Are For in 1985. The track featured not only Warwick and Bacharach, but also Gladys Knight, Elton John, and Stevie Wonder. The song was released as a charity single, with the proceeds going toward funding AIDS research. The song became an iconic song of the era and garnered Warwick her fifth Grammy Award. The collaboration showcased the enduring talent and camaraderie between Warwick and her fellow artists, while also raising awareness and support for an important cause. AIDS is a mankind and it does not discriminate, it irrespective of color or condition, age or gender. Warwick brought her dynamic singing talents and commanding personality to television outlets as well. She hosted the successful music program Solid Gold, the Soul Train Music Awards, and starred in her own show Dion and Friends. Warwick has used her fame and influence to support causes close to her heart. A tireless activist, Warwick has served as the U.S. Ambassador of Health, a post that she held through both the Ronald Reagan and George Bush administrations. As one of the first artists to heighten public awareness of the AIDS epidemic, Warwick's concerted efforts raised millions of dollars. Dion's musical career continued into the 21st century with several notable releases and achievements. In 2006, she released the album My Friends and Me, which featured duets with artists such as Cyndi Lauper and Reba McIntyre, where they sang her classic hits together. Just two years later, Warwick released the gospel album Why We Sing, which delved into her spiritual side and showcased her powerful vocals in the genre. She explained to Christian Music Today why she decided to make this Kirk Franklin song the title track of her album. Quote, I love that song. As a matter of fact, I call it my personal testimony whenever I do it in my performances. And I'm sure Kirk views it as his testimony too. There's no other reason that we have to sing and perform aside from the big guy in the sky. 
Then, after a break, she returned in 2014 and released another duet album titled Feel So Good, featuring collaborations with artists like Jamie Foxx and CeeLo Green. Warwick later returned to her R&B roots with the album She's Back, produced by her son. This release marked a return to her musical roots and garnered critical acclaim. I never thought I'd feel this way. Many of you might not know, but Dion is also a noble soldier of humanity. In an interview with The Guardian, she said, quote, Family and the importance of not being denigrated because you happen to love God. That happens to be high on my priorities, and it seems it is everywhere else except the United States. I don't just feel that way about the US, but I feel that way about the entire world. It's in the most chaotic state ever. It's just a period of time in which everything's changing. Wars, segregation, everything that the entire world is going through. Emotionally, mentally, and physically, it's in a sad state right now. There's segregation going on in the States and segregation going on in the UK. There's segregation going on everywhere, it's still the same. Warwick experienced formal segregation firsthand while touring the southern US, where audiences were split according to race. Quote, it was in the 60s and it was horrible, something I'd never experienced. It was like a bad movie. That was the modus operandi for that part of our country. Unfortunately, nothing's really changed yet. I hope eventually we'll get to the point where we all understand that we all bleed red blood and of. However, despite her strong beliefs, Dion explained that she didn't have the heart of a marcher. She said, quote, I'm not a marcher, I'm a doer. I believe I was the first African American woman to win a Grammy in the pop arena, which was basically almost designated for white people, so it was kind of unheard of. I was probably the first person in a lot of areas. Unbeknownst to most, Dion had a very interesting meeting with Donald Trump while she appeared in the Celebrity Apprentice show hosted by him. She said, quote, The Donald Trump that I knew was very nice. He really was. He was a gentleman. He never was out of the way with me. I didn't know what he did with anybody else, but I know how he treated me. I did concerts in his hotel, and he was always very nice to me. The respect garnered by Dion over the years is immense. To this day, fans regard her as the queen of music. Quote, she is such a brilliant, amazing woman with a bright spirit and a great sense of humor. I can watch her talk all day. I've never seen an interview with her. I'm glad I came across this. And that was so heartfelt of her to give all her proceeds from that song to help with research and all that. She has a heart of gold. Not many people do things like that. May God watch over her and protect her. Over the course of her career, Warwick was one of the most successful female vocalists of the 20th century with 56 of her singles making the Hot 100 chart between 1962 and 1980, including 12 in the top 10. Overall, 80 singles by Warwick, either solo or in collaboration, made the Hot 100 R&B and adult contemporary charts.